You want to make money day trading, but not sure where to start. Don't you worry. I'm going to go into detail step by step what I would do if I had to start over today. I'm going to be diving into how to get started, the different trading styles, rules you must know, the different learning stages you need to be aware of so you're prepared, how to actually plan a trade, and as a bonus, I'm going to show you a simple strategy you can use right away, and I'm going to show you how I actually implemented this strategy on a previous trade I took. The first thing you want to do is create a demo account. Now you can create a demo account in two different ways. One is TradingView, which is a software I use every single day to draw my charts out and to view the stock market. And the other is Cobra Trading, which is also a sponsor of mine. More about them later. But you can also open up a demo account with them as well. Links will be below for them so that way you can check them out. Once you actually open a demo account, you need to make sure that you set the amount of the demo account at the real value that you you're going to start with. So if you're going to start with $5,000, set it to 5,000. If you're going to start at 100K, uh, you, you shouldn't. But if you do, set it at 100K. You want to make it realistic as possible because if not, this is not going to be beneficial to you as much as it can be. Once you open your demo account, you're going to want to get familiar with it. Just spend a day playing with everything, looking at all of the options. I'll make another video in detail because that's a whole video itself and how to set it up and how to actually execute. Now, once you set up your demo account and you have it set to the right amount, I need you to have the right mindset. And the mindset that you need is that this is a probability game. And right now you're in practice mode. And practice mode means you need to try as many things as possible and keep track of everything you do. I hate always tracking every single thing I do because it becomes tedious, especially if you trade it a lot. When you're new, you're gonna trade a lot because you're excited, you wanna make this happen. And so you're gonna to to document every single trade in detail. What I mean by detail is your trade plan, your thesis, everything around the trade itself, what you were feeling, what you were thinking. I'm gonna go into more detail of what a trade plan is later on in this video, but I'm just trying to get you in the right mindset that you are in practice mode and you need to be prepared for that, that this is gonna take a lot of work, but once you put all the work in in the front end, over time it will pay off dividends and help you out in the long run, whether it's you trying to leave your career or just make some extra income on the side because I am an advocate for having multiple sources of income. Now the other thing with your mindset is you do not, and I repeat this, you do not want to follow anyone please if people give you advice find someone that you should follow they're basically just saying i want you to follow me because i want all your money that's just not what it is what they should be saying is sure i can show you how to trade but never follow me you need to build your own confidence i can show you right now i'm going to show you a strategy of how to execute a trade but if i show you live and you're with me and you're trading you're not going to execute the same you're going to do poorly and then when you're not with me you're going to do even worse because you have no confidence so you want to learn a strategy from different people but you do not want to actually follow them into executing that strategy. You have to learn to build that confidence on your own, which comes from tracking. When you track everything, then you'll be able to look at the data and be like, okay, I'm getting confidence from the data. I know this works because I executed it and it's my ideas. If you trade off of someone else's ideas, you will lose. It happens to me to this day. I have a very good friend of mine who is a very experienced trader. His name's Old Man Scott. Shout out to you, my friend. He's helped me a lot in my own trading career as well. Even if I hear one of his ideas, it could really mess up my trading for that day if I let it get into my brain, which sometimes happens. I'm not perfect. So I need to tell you this. If I don't listen to anybody, I do very well. This is what I mean. It's hard to explain until you do it. One day you will graduate from this beginning stage and you'll start trading and you'll figure it out and you'll be like, ah, I remember what Alex said. And you'll come back and you'll comment and say, I remember what you said and you're absolutely correct. And if you've already experienced this, comment below saying, don't follow anyone because it does not work. So people can see that and they know it's not just me saying it. Now, there are many different trading styles that I want to mention here and explain very briefly so you can have an idea of what style may fit you best and then you can dive into that style even deeper by looking at different books looking at different people who explain those styles i'll be explaining some of those styles in more detail in other videos but for the sake of this i want you to know there's swing trading which is a trader who basically takes positions on daily and weekly time frames they are taking a position in hopes that they can hold it for at least a day two three and they can even hold it for weeks if the trade 
continues to work in their favor. This is a great opportunity for people who are working a full-time job and they're trading and they're trying to learn. You can execute trades and don't have to be at your computer every single day like me. The other option is day trading and there's many subcategories in day trading. One of those is scalping, which is you hear about all the time. Those are the people who are using the one minute chart, the tick chart, and they're just in and out, in and out very quickly. They're taking small baby moves of the big picture and they're making it work for them. The challenge with this style is that you do have to be at your computer every single day and stare at it. Now, some people love that. If you're a gamer and you love that quick buttons, quick action, you might really love that style. The other option is you can become a swing intraday day trader, which is something I do. And that is you take a position in the opening of the day and then you hold it until the position hits your price target or it hits your stop, whichever comes first. And you take profits along the way. I try to take the meat of the whole move and try to take advantage of the move itself. I do not hold overnight. That's another option. I do swing trade as well because I have a long-term portfolio. And then there's the investing option, which is when you wanna buy something for five, 10 years, most of us know that, it's not why you're here. Another way is social arbitrage and it's so unique. I've actually interviewed a trader recently from Dumb Money TV, shout out to you guys, Chris Camillo, who made 40 million using this strategy. And basically it's looking at social media, seeing what's trending and finding companies that own those trends or at least are part of it that can get a positive impact on their stock because of the trend and then looking to buy those companies. That's a very unique opportunity and unique strategy that I'm actually very interested in learning more and more about, but I want you to know about it now, just in case that rings a bell for you and you like that style. Now, if you're wanting to learn more about these styles, I'll have a link below of the books that I recommend to buy, so that way you can learn more about each style. There's a book called Market Wizards and others in the links below, where you can basically see different types of traders express how they trade in different styles, using different markets, and you can pick whichever one vibes well with you. So that way you can start this fresh start on the right foot. Now here are some of the rules you need to know before you start trading. The first one is a pattern day trader rule. It means you cannot execute more than three day trades in a rolling five day period if your account is under 25K. It gets tricky because every broker, Fidelity, E-Trade, Cobra, so forth, they all see this rule a little differently. For example, some brokers may see you enter a trade on Apple three times on the same day, meaning you buy Apple 100, buy it at 101, buy it at 102, and then exit at 104, all of the position that is one day trade. However, some brokers see that as four. This is the tricky part. So you need to make sure you get with your broker and find out how they view a full day trade. If you know the rule for your particular broker like E-Trade, Cobra, whoever it is, make sure to comment below what that is because it could help someone who is interested in using them as a broker and they are aware, hey, I got to be careful with this rule. The reason you need to be careful is because when I first started and I wasn't aware of this rule, I was using Fidelity. And when I traded more than three day trades, they lock your account for 90 days, which is pretty much eternity, especially when you're excited and you're trying to learn this game. They do forgive you, I think once, so I, there's that. But once they forgive you, there's no more forgiveness. So make sure you know this rule. Now I wanna explain the market hours. The market's open from 9.30 to 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. However, the market is still open during pre-market and after hours, after and before those times. You need to make sure that your broker can execute trades during those after and pre-market hours. Because if you cannot, you should probably not be executing trades and holding them overnight because a lot of things can happen and you could wake up to a big headache. The next thing is shorting and buying. When you buy a stock, it means when a stock is going up and down like this, when you buy, you buy down here hoping to sell higher, right? So you can make a profit. When you're shorting a stock, you're doing the opposite. You're selling up here, looking to buy down here to make a profit, to make that difference. So that's buying and shorting. And if you're interested primarily in short selling, you need to check out my broker who I've been using for years. And they are now a sponsor called Cobra Trading. They specialize in short selling. You can also buy going long with them, which I do as well, but they have the lowest commissions for a direct access broker. And every time I look to short a stock, I am able to because they have borrows. If you don't know yet to short a stock, some of them you do have to borrow shares to do it. It's a whole other concept, which I'll get into later. Cobra normally has the borrows. 
A lot of brokers do not. So you definitely want to check them out, especially if you're interested in short selling. Not only do they have the best commission and the best borrows, but if you mention Be The Trader when you reach out to them, they'll hook you up with an additional 33% discount. Oh my God. Wow. So it does help me out a little bit, but it also helps you out a ton. The link will be below. The next thing you need to know is a different type of orders. For this instance, we're gonna talk about market orders, limit orders, OCO orders, and stops. Market orders are simple. When you wanna buy a stock and you set a market order, it will execute at any price that is available at that second you press that button. So if a stock is $100 and you press buy in a market order, you will get executed at $100. Or if the stock rips to 101 as soon as you press it, you're gonna buy at 101. That's how fast market orders are. They don't care about what the price is, they just get you in. Limit orders are different. Limit orders, you choose the price that you're willing to pay. You can say, if the stock said $100, I only wanna buy it at 99, meaning it has to dip down. You set your limit order, it will only get executed if it touches $99. That's my favorite type of order because you're in control of your risk when you set limit orders. That leads me to stop orders, which you have to use, especially as a beginner. There's no excuses, you better use them. Let me show you. A stop order is this. If you see a stock moving like this, let's say, and then you buy a stock down here and you and it starts to go in your direction and you have a stop right here that means if the stock just rips back down you will get executed and get kicked out of the position so that way you don't have to ride it if it continues to go lower and have a bigger loss it's a really good way to protect your losses always use a stop you want to use one there's two different stops stop market and stop limit and you know what those two are market and limit so make sure you utilize those appropriately the next order is oco orders this is very very valuable order it means and i'm going to show you here if a stock is doing this right and you decide to buy it right here you can set an order that says when it gets to this price to sell my position and if it dips below this price to sell my position so that way you guessed it you not have to sit your computer all day you can leave go have a good time and come back. And if the stock continues in this direction, it'll execute and get you all out. If it fails and goes down, it'll execute and get you all out. And this will help you stick to your plan, which is probably the number one reason why a lot of traders fail. They don't really have a plan and they don't stick to it when they do have one. Speaking of plans, you always want to follow your plan, which means you always need a plan. I'm going to show you how to create that. Now, before I dive into the plan and details of how to create one and show you a strategy that you can actually implement right away, I need you to understand the phases of your learning during this journey. The first thing is you're gonna be in the learning phase for a while, which means you're gonna be so much information you have to learn. So give yourself at least six months to learn this to absorb all the information. Because if you do not take your time, you will rush into being broke. I promise you, when I first started trading, I didn't listen to this because I didn't have someone telling me this advice. It was always like, get rich quick, learn this fast. And so that's the mindset I had. And I had a great career. And so I put in big money and lost big at the beginning. So you do not want to do that. Have the right mindset. Say, I'm going to take six months to learn the lingo what support is, what resistance is, all of these different orders, how to use my account, how to open a demo account, how to actually execute a trade, take your time. During that learning phase, you're still gonna execute trades, you're not gonna know much, but you're gonna execute trades off of basic strategies. One of the strategies I'm gonna show you right now, you can implement right away, and you're gonna wanna track them, and you're gonna wanna track them in detail. Why'd you lose? What your emotions were? How'd you enter the trade? Why'd you enter? What your thesis was? What the pattern was? What the strategy was? Did you stick to it? Did did you get emotional? You want to be very, very detailed about your journaling when it comes to your trading. During the learning phase, the reason you want to do that is because over time, you'll create a data full of tons of trades that you have taken, and then you can look at that and see which ones click with you, which ones do you prefer, which ones do you have an edge. Now, there are other ways you can track it. You can use digital journals like TraderVue or TraderSync. I'll have links below. Check them out. You can actually import all your trades there. They'll give you all the stats. So you don't have to do it yourself. It'll help you a ton and save you a lot of time. Once you're through with the learning stage, you're gonna go into the testing phase. And that is when you kind of have an idea, 
you got the basics, you have an idea of what you wanna do, what you wanna try, and you're gonna test it. And you're gonna test that for about six months. Yes, that means you're a year in, you're not rushing this, you're taking your time. If you cut it down, that's fine, it's up to you, but I need you to know I wish someone told me this and I took my time and didn't rush. Because of that, it took me a lot longer to find what works for me. It took me three years. It can hopefully only take you about a year and a half. Everyone has their own journey and some people have to learn it from their own mistakes and some can learn it from hearing from others like on YouTube. In the testing phase, you wanna be very specific and track every single thing because then once you have that data and it's more refined after the practice and then testing, then you can actually start the next phase, which is your execution phase. That's after a year of doing this, the next six months you wanna execute and only execute the strategy you saw gave you the right outcome. Once you tracked all your trades, you're only gonna trade that. Your whole goal there is to have the right psychology to only trade that setup. Don't trade all the other shiny objects. Stick to your plan. Don't get emotional. It's a whole other journey, but you master that for six months, you'll gain the confidence to trade live. Now that you're starting to have a better foundation, I wanna show you what the anatomy of a trade plan actually is and how to use it to create your own trade plans in the future so that way you can have the right foundation. Let's go ahead and do that now. So the anatomy of trade plan, the first thing you need to know is the actual strategy. What's the strategy that's triggering us to even be interested in this stock? Now I'm gonna show you conceptually here and then I'm gonna show you an actual trade example. For this specific strategy, what we're gonna be looking for is a breakout. Breakout is anything breaking out of the daily or hourly time frame. If it's breaking out of a structure, then it could continue higher. Now that sounds simple, but the challenge is where to enter, where to put your stop without getting faked out because a lot of breakouts do dip and then continue and you don't wanna be faked out and how to actually hold the trade for the meat of the move and making sure you pick the right area to take profits and get out. On this breakout, let's pretend this breakout is right above this area. Whenever it breaks out, you don't wanna just buy right away. That's not what you wanna do. When it breaks out here, never just buy especially when a stock just goes straight up, you do not wanna do that, okay? But the strategy is a breakout, right? Doesn't mean you wanna buy right there. Instead, you wanna wait for it to pull back and then here is where you want to be buying. Now that we know the setup, we know it triggered it, right? The trigger is the breakout. The next thing we need to figure out is where do we wanna enter? So where we wanna enter is in the pullback and the test of the breakout. Following that step is where are you wrong? Where's your stop loss at? Let's just say we zoomed in on this area right here, because again, we're on the hourly. And then when we zoom in there, what we see appears right here and it's a different time frame. It's like a five minute or 10 minute. We see this consolidation and push. And let's just say this consolidation, that's where you wanna put your stop. So when it pulls back and goes, when you enter here, which is right here, you can risk this area and have a proper risk reward. That's the idea. So to make this a little cleaner, we're gonna go ahead and redraw this. And we're gonna do it like this, and then this right here, and break out and come down. So what I mean is, when you get in on the pullback, you can risk this prior consolidation area and then ride it back up. That is the plan. So you'll set your stop there. And then if it dips below, you get out. If it continues, you take profit. And where you want to take profit, your first profit target should be the prior high. That should definitely be your first profit target. And then I'll show you how to find the future ones in the future. But I need you to know the idea of a trade plan. What's the setup? We know it's a breakout. It broke out. We don't just buy here at the breakout. Instead, we wait for it to push up, pull back down, get an entry because we know where we want to enter. And we know where our stop is because of the consolidation. And after that, we know our entry, our stop, the trade plan. We got that. And we have the strategy. Now we just let it work. And we do not, I repeat, we do not, we do not let our emotions dictate our strategy. Notice how I never said, well, how you ask yourself how you feel when it's down here, ask yourself where you're feeling. No, you just trade your plan. Your emotions will creep in and be like, oh, I don't know if it's gonna work. It could take longer. Oh, it might crack. I don't wanna take a loss. That will interfere. Write that down when it happens because you need to make sure that you are aware of it and you can get rid of that 
or at least learn to live with it and not let it make decisions. That's super important. Okay, so let me show you the strategy that we're gonna be working on. It's a simple one. It's gonna be the breakout strategy, which we talked about earlier when we talked about the anatomy of a trade plan. But now let me show you the strategy in live action. Okay, so this is Apple. With Apple, you'll see right away that we have a breakout opportunity in this area. It topped out, fell, topped out, fell, topped out, fell, Try to break, failed, and then pushed again. This is an important area of supply where it keeps selling off. If this area starts to flip and become demand, it could be a really nice breakout opportunity, which is something that I'm willing to try. And the next zone is the 140. So if you got it at 137, you can get $3 a share, $2 a share for upside. And if it really wants to run, it can go much higher. Now, with that being said, since we know what we're looking for, I'm looking for the breakout. We notice this on the chart, it's very easy to see. Once you see it, you then want to zoom in let's go to the five minute and we notice we can refine this like this area right here it could be that breakout as this i like to do both just so i can have an idea of how strong this stock is so we're gonna go ahead and press play and see what happens As you can see, it actually held the breakout error for quite some time, which this line right here is the real breakout. This is just where it wicked above and failed. So we'll delete this for a second so I don't confuse you. But we held under it, which I really like to see because it contracted. It was contracting and it was just building its power, meaning it was trying to figure out who's going to win. Is it going to be supply or is it going to be demand? And in this case, demand won. As you can see, it popped right back up. And we're going to go ahead and play it. And this is what I love. It popped up and then failed. And this right here is, as I mentioned earlier, the market's open from 9.30 Eastern to 4 p.m. Eastern. So this right here is after hours and pre-market. Still information I wanna watch. The market is still active, so be aware of that. We're gonna go ahead and press play because it's still pre-market, but I do take this into account. We couldn't break after hours. We broke above it, failed below, broke above it again. When we break twice above this area during after hours and pre-market, that tells me we are breaking above above this level. Now, I just need to figure out how to enter this stock. Now, if we zoom out here, you'll see that this level is coming into play. It actually topped off twice in the after hours and pre-market. That is showing me that there could be some heavy supply still in this area, which means I may want to either short it or wait for it to break to really go long. With that being said, even though I think this is still a long, I still need to acknowledge that there's heavy supply up here and it fell twice that I could be wrong. And so I may want to wait for this to really break to give me that conviction before I go along. And what happens next is it breaks straight through both resistance areas and goes all the way up to the next area of interest, which we drew on the chart earlier. Remember this level that we could take profits. And we said if we could break this, it could go even higher. And what happens? We zoom in here. It went straight up broke both resistance levels, came to the 140, hesitated, which is where I actually took a short at because this is a key area of supply, which I showed you earlier, cut it for a quick loss and then went long and rode it all the way up. Now, this is what I mean when, when you miss an opportunity, like I missed this long here, this is the best entry for the breakout. However, this is also another breakout. So don't give up, wait for it it could reset up. So if we zoom in here and we notice it broke above, came back down, before it broke above and came back down, if we go to the five minute, you'll see that this area right here is an area of interest where it, right before it broke out, it consolidated, pushed up, and then came back down. And so because of this area of interest consolidation before the breakout, which is a key area, remember what I mentioned before, when a stock breaks out, at this area, if we zoom in here and it looks like this before the breakout, consolidate it, then we can risk here, remember? I was mentioning that earlier. So in this case, you can get long anywhere over here or right here or even here when it re-breaks and risk this prior low and then ride it back up. That would be your trade plan. You'd have your entry when the pullbacks, remember, you wanna wait for it to pull back because this is a breakout area. So you wanna wait for it to pull back find your entry and then write it back up and have your stop. Your stop would be below this zone. So that's super important to understand and I need you to see that. So here's a trade that I actually executed on. You'll see that I took a baby short right away when it hit that main zone of 140 that I talked about earlier where I thought that's where I would take all my profits at. Because I missed the initial run up, I decided to short it, cut it, and then when it broke above, what did I do? I said it's a breakout still. It's a new breakout of a key area of the 140s. I need to wait for the pullback. We got the pullback, got long, risking this prior consolidation, 
which is these two candles here and these two candles, this zone, which I drew out for you very clearly here. And then from there, you just ride it up. So that's the breakout strategy that you can implement right away. And we're gonna give you an added bonus. It's a PDF case study of this trade. So that way you can reference it every time that you're looking to implement this strategy. All you have to do is provide us your email and we'll email it directly to you. There'll be a link below for that. We're giving away 48 meals this month. You're at your desk, you're busy, you're trading, you're working. You don't have time to go make a delicious, healthy meal. Instead, what do you do? You order some fast delivery service that isn't healthy. Don't worry, we got you covered because we are partnering with Icon Meals who creates healthy, delicious meals and they deliver it right to you. My favorite meal from Icon is the Titan Burrito. It's a breakfast burrito that is filled with egg and potatoes, all the good stuff. And it comes with salsa because you know, salsa is the best. Now there are many meals to choose from. That was just my favorite. The way you enter to win is just comment below what you had for lunch today and then click the link and follow the instructions.